Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lousers, and welcome to Dr. Click. You smell absolutely astounding today, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. So what do we do here in Dr. Click? This, this is empty, by the way. It's just, it's just for show, so don't worry. <laughs> so what do we do here at Dr. Click? We go over questions online that people may have about all kinds of things. It can be relationship questions, religious questions, scientific questions, family questions from Cora, the place that you definitely shouldn't go to because, dear God, it's a cesspool but I have decided to filter through it for you. You see, this is a public service. I'm like putting myself between you and the internet-inducing wave of traumatic content and reviewing it in funny voices. So let's go through some insane Quora together and answer the questions to the best of our ability. This is going to be... <laughs> absolutely atrocious. This is going to be so bad. Gora, if evolution were not false, how do evolutionists explain that Adam is a more common name than Darwin? <laughs> Why doesn't anyone call their son Darwin? <laughs> because Darwin is a last name, you idiot! I remind you, smart butt, that Darwin's name was Charles, which is Carlos and which is a fairly common name. In fact, I have known more Carlos and Charles than and Nail that one. Yeah, so that's a good question. If evolution was not false, how come you didn't name your baby Darwin? Checkmate, atheists. I feel like we really start off on top here. At least the atheist questions are out of the way. Let's keep going, shall we? If evolution was not false... <laughs> okay, here we go. How do evolutionists explain that the Bible existed 2,000 years ago? But the hypothesis of evolution did not exist at the time. And the Bible does not even mention evolutionism. Well, this question is certainly a bit... Uh, out there, but let's entertain it for a second, shall we? Because that is indeed why we're here. So, so the whole logic here is, of course, is that just because humans haven't discovered something yet in our science or in our documents or whatever, it doesn't mean it just didn't exist before then. You can take something as simple as various diseases. We, for example, didn't have a way to recognize or treat cancer, for example, not that long ago, but now we do. That doesn't magically mean that cancer just didn't exist before then. We just didn't really know what it was. <sighs> all right, now we're finally through with the atheist question. <clears throat> if evolution were not false, this is all made by the same guy. How do evolutionists explain that the Bible is the word of God, but the origin of species, which is the sacred book of evolutionism, is all only the word of Darwin. You know, some questions I don't think deserve an answer. This is one of them. Next one. If evolution were not... <laughs> How do evolution explain that it has been proven that dinosaurs never existed? Where? How? What do you mean? Evolutionism is unsustainable without dinosaurs, therefore it is false. What do you mean dinosaurs never- What are you talking about? Well, atheists, since it has been proven that the moon isn't real- No, I will not extrapolate with sources or anything like that. How do you explain the tides? That's right, the earth is flat and the giant turtle is spinning it like this. Because the moon isn't real. That is proven. If evolution would not- ah! How do evolutionists explain why there are so many recorded attacks by chimpanzees on humans? <laughs> if we descend from them, why do they attack us? Have you spent time around any kind of living creatures? Even animals that are the same animals fight all the time. Just look at the homicide rates in humans as, as you know, a blatant example. What the f***? You are right, evolution is false. This is proven by the fact even today there are chimpanzees asking questions on Korra. <laughs> they never evolved. <laughs> you know, this video is already worse than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with this. But that is also a favorite argument I see all the time. Like, but if evolution is real, how come there are both monkeys and humans if humans evolved from monkeys? And you know, common ancestor is one of those mind-boggling concepts. Apparently it is very mind-boggling. For some reason. I don't know, I think I learned that in like fifth grade. If evolution were not false, and evolution explained why we're going to apes to become humans. There it is! There it is! Oh my god, I literally predicted the next post. I am amazing. Dear atheists, if monkeys were real, how come Click can predict the future of me? Anyway, uh, let's see now. If evolution were not false, how do evolutionists explain why they don't try to convince apes to become humans? What do you mean? That we go to like, we go to nature reserves and talk to monkeys? and tell them, like, hey, bruv, shouldn't you try to become human? We have, like, PS5s and sh**. And they're like, damn, that's some, that's some Riz, bro, for real, for real. And th then they just become human. 
What? Wouldn't the process of evolution help? <laughs> help what? All right, all right, all right. Uh, to entertain the question, because that seems to be something that is surprisingly painful to do. Um, evolution happens to populations, not individuals. You're not going to evolve someone by talking to them. This isn't Pokemon. Answer. Should I sue my doctor for violating my Second Amendment right, forcing me to disarm for an MRA? <laughs> the Supreme say I can take it wherever and do whatever I want with it? Wait, so, so basically, just to get the definition right here, an MRA scan is a strong magnetic field and radio waves to produce detailed images inside the body. So you want to bring a gun with you into a heavy magnetic and electric machine. What could possibly go wrong? Man, I've seen Americans sue for some silly stuff, but this one takes the cake, doesn't it? I wonder if they would also sue if they accidentally shot themselves when taking the gun into the MRA machine, you know? That seems to be the other outcome. So yeah, kind of like the conclusion I come to from this is that if you're in Merca, you're gonna get sued no matter what you do. <laughs> nice. Can you be charged with a crime if you do the R-wording to an armed intruder in your home? Or can you use any force you wish upon them? <laughs> what? Why would it- Why would this come up? You know, usually, if there's like an altercation of self-defense and stuff, you usually argue like, how much violence is too much violence? You know, kicking someone when they're already down is typically stepping over that threshold of violence. I would imagine if you punch someone down in your own house, even if it's self-defense, and then you start going ham on their hams, so to say, I would say that that's probably more physical activities than would be deemed necessary for the situation. I'm not a lawyer, but that would seem the logical route. Thank you so much. I have now answered this absolutely unhinged Cora question. I just imagine some absolutely like horny person sitting and waiting by their door for some poor burglars to come through and be like, oh yeah, now I can do stuff to them without consequence because it's self-defense. That's literally the logic here. Oh my God. Atheists. Again? Imagine you are going skydiving with a Christian baby. Can you go skydiving with babies? I'm, I'm not entirely sure about the premise of this question. Suddenly the baby tells you he won't open his parachute until you renounce atheism and accept Jesus as your lord and savior. Wait a second. So you're not only going parachuting with a literal baby. The baby can also talk and the baby also has its own parachute and you can talk at a comfortable level while falling through the atmosphere with a baby. Or, or, okay, yeah, the context is pretty wild. What would you do? <laughs> I'd say, holy shit, a talking baby. A talking baby must be the spawn of Satan. Bye-bye, baby. I mean, yeah, honestly, that, that would be just as likely, wouldn't it? I saw a very interesting hypothesis posted somewhere a while ago. Like, what would happen if Jesus actually came back? And part of this analysis, which is one I also agree with myself, is I don't think most institutions would recognize it. Because so much regarding this, especially in the US, just imagine all the televangelists and the church and the money that pumps through it and the tax evasion, all that kind of stuff. I don't think they would recognize the second coming of Jesus. I'm gonna be honest. I think if he, you know, could come back that way, I don't think he would. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, you know? <laughs> I once went to a party with my husband, full of people he knew from work, but I didn't. A guy came up to us, turned to me and said, Ah, oh, you must be his wife. I turned to my husband and said, You have a wife? Should have seen the guy's face. I have seen this one. This one is a classic, but this seems to be a Cora post asking for opinions. So let's see what happens on Cora. If I was in that guy's place, I would have maintained the bro code by saying, you know we have been brothers since last 10 years and the one thing that I have known about him is when it comes to being in a relationship, he has a special taste for young, low-hanging fruits. And when I saw you, I found you in that category, which is why I assume that you are his spouse or girlfriend. This is like that weird kind of, you know, spiteful arguing fanfic that you sometimes tell yourself in the shower because you're upset at a previous experience that you didn't have a catchy snapback. But this isn't something that leaves the shower, all right, my dude? Don't know. 
Or then the girl would have exclaimed, First of all, I am his wife, and second, how come you have the audacity to call me low-hanging fruit? And then I would say, How come you are such a cow that you have never seen men? Men hit on their male friends' friends who are not their girlfriend or spouses. And we do it either because we have the balls or the banana above our balls inspired us to do so. Then the girl would have said, First you call me low-hanging fruit, and now a cow. You are such a jerk. Why are you spending, like, multiple hours of your day making up a conversation that didn't happen to reply on something on Cora? What the hell? And then I would have said, I also called you young, but then my spidey sense made me call you low-hanging fruit and a cow, because I saw how big of a birch you were. Then the girl would have said, Do you want me to slap you? I would have said, Yes, on my butt. Then she would have said, What did you just say? I would have ended the argument by saying, See, bro, I told you never end that casual relationship you were having with your boss. Who was asking you to divorce your wife and marry her instead? Yet you did because you wanted love. Now why don't you start a new relationship from scratch? Even my cringy-ass 13-year-old self wouldn't have written fanfics this bad. Yeah, this person spent like half their Saturday inserting themselves into just a funny tweet story, turning themselves into the main character of the story, where they're arguing with some random dude's wife for no reason and basically just insulting her for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> and then having snappy comebacks, which are only snappy because all the other characters in the story have been written as, like, non-humans. They're, they're not actual entities, they're just there to, like, bounce whatever he says. So <laughs> he just wrote himself in as the main character in the story, he has nothing to do with, and he didn't even do it well. <laughs> A Bachelor of Science from Uppsala University. Oh no, this is Swedish. My cat doesn't like her food because it is vegetables. But I can't give her meat since I am vegan. How do I get her to like vegetables? Children are the same way, but they can learn. Answer. Cats are different from humans. You are torturing your cat to death. A vegan diet will kill a cat because it does not get the nutrition its body requires. I really fail to understand how a vegan can be so insanely cruel to an animal. Yeah, that kind of blows my mind. I have seen this repeated a little here and there. I, I don't think it's like a st significant statistic or anything like that, but I have seen it occasionally in viral clips and that kind of stuff where vegans will try to force their animals that are, you know, carnivores, for example, to only eat vegetables, which is pretty wild. Like I said, I don't think it's a significant statistics. I think these people are just a bit nuts. But I think it's a bit funny, the hypocrisy. Like, your whole choice of diet is probably because you don't want to be cruel to animals, but yet you're cruel to your own animal. <laughs> You know, the whole ideology just comes full circle and you become what you swore to destroy. Cats are obligate carnivores. They have to eat meat or they go blind at best. Don't have pets if you don't feed them an appropriate diet. Yeah, that should be that should be pretty like basic things. And also comparing <laughs> cats to baby humans. Baby humans can learn. Could that be because baby humans are omnivores per chance? Not according to this guy. Anonymous, I am a convicted Nazi offender, and my IQ is 143. Okay. During my incarceration and treatment during probation, I came to know about 30 fellow P-words. How wholesome. The large majority of them had what I consider above-average intelligence, and a few of them were much more intelligent than me. So essentially, no, P-words are actually more likely to have a high IQ. Oh my god! So this entire post is basically trying to suggest that there is a positive correlation between intelligence and kitty diddling. Well, that's absolutely wild. But also one thing I would like to say in regards to anyone bragging about their IQ, especially when it has to do with this kind of stuff, is that no one that does anything with their IQ has ever feels the need to brag about their IQ. It's a weird thing to brag about. I think even Stephen Hawking said something similar to that. I've never met anyone who's actually doing something that requires a level of intellect that, like, brags about their IQ. You know, you, you... It's so weird, man. It's so weird. And also, of course, another funny side tangent to that is most people that are bragging about their IQ, especially online, like, 90% of these people got their IQ on one of those free tests online that is not accurate, it's not Mensa-approved, and they probably got a high score because whoever is selling that little test wants to, like, rope them in to get the premium. You know, so sometimes when you do these tests, it will tell you like, oh, you have 130 IQ at least. If you want to check if you have higher, pay for this one. So, you know, it's a way to suck people in. It's, it's not like necessarily a valid test. Human psychology facts. My 16-year-old daughter says she just wants to be alone. And she keeps saying she wishes she had a door. Why doesn't she have a door? 
What do I do? I am not giving her a door. I have a list of things you could do that would improve both your situations. Number one, report yourself to CPS. Two, go to therapy. Three, reflect on your parenting. Why does your daughter want to be away from you? I mean, it's not even be away from you. In this case, I would say it's very justified, but just having your personal space is pretty basic human stuff. We all like to have our own rooms and our own space. 4. Think about why she wants privacy. Don't you want privacy? Don't you want to be a decent parent? 5. Pray every morning, night and meal that she won't cut you off completely when she moves out. 6. Reverse the roles. Take off your own door and see how it feels. Do you miss having privacy? 7. Whatever you said yes or no to the last question, give her a door. <laughs> Honestly, this is a story I've seen repeated a few times on like r slash insane parents, where some parents believe that being so overprotective to the point that their kids don't have basic privacy of like their own rooms is absolutely wild. <laughs> I don't know, it, it's so ridiculous, man. It's so weird. I think sometimes these are just parents that go on like a power trip, sort of. And if that is the case, you shouldn't have kids to begin with. Like kids aren't there for power trips, dear God. What do I do when my husband gives me the ultimatum that it's either him or my cat that I've had for 12 years? Why would he give the ultimatum? <laughs> it's so weird, unless he's like heavily allergic or something. Aw, poor thing. Just pack a small bag with his favorite treats and toys he likes to play with. Make sure to get his vaccination records together and include one of your old shirts to keep him comforted. Drive him to a quiet place in the park and leave him. Your husband! There. I've had my Boris for 12 years too and there is nobody coming between us. I mean, unless one of the people is like heavy allergic and you're planning to move in together or something like that, or there is something, you know, the pet is struggling, you know, they're suffering through something, maybe they start becoming aggressive because of health issues, something like that. There are very niche scenarios where I can see stuff becoming problematic, but this doesn't sound like it. This just sounds weird. People who do like ultimatums for no apparent reason in relationships probably shouldn't be in relationships. My ex gave me this ultimatum, him or the cats we had. Well, my husband loves them as much as I do. Easiest choice ever made. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, yeah, so you found a new person that meshes with pets. That's also one thing. If you love a certain kind of pet, you would probably want to find someone, at least for a long-term partnership, that also likes the same pets. You know, if you both like dogs, it's kind of nice to have a dog together, and so on. Should atheists be forced to work on Christian holidays, like Christmas and <laughs> Thanksgiving? <laughs> You know, Christmas, that has, like, very pagan roots. Isn't that just beautiful? Or Thanksgiving, the the, the Christian holiday Thanksgiving? <laughs> Alright, we have to answer the question as well. Uh... No? My MacBook Air weighs 2.3 pounds. If I download more files on it, will it make it heavier? If it helps, I'm running Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, no, I think there is a very slight technicality, at least on old hard drives, that they technically get slightly, slightly, slightly heavier when stuff gets saved on them. But it's like, you know, particle level stuff. It's not like you're actually gonna notice a difference, you know? Let's see, let me actually double check that. Does a hard drive get heavier when you store things on it? Yes, they really do weigh more filled with data. For traditional magnetic HDDs, also yes, but indirectly. An actively used HDD will weigh more than an inert, but due to side effects of adding the data, not from the data itself. In electronic storage, adding information to RAM, SSDs, flash memory, etc., that is, storing a 1 instead of a 0, requires storing an electric charge. Each electron has a very small weight, something like 9.109 times 10 to the power or a minus 31 kilos, so adding electrons does mean adding a tiny amount of weight. How much weight? To get a real-world answer, you would have to make assumptions about how many electrons constitute a useful charge state for whatever device you're talking about. But one calculation says that one gigabyte of flash memory completely filled with ones weighs something like 729 femtograms more than the same memory filled with zeros. A femtogram is tinier than tiny. 0.000000000000 zero 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 one kilograms okay so i suppose to answer to this question is short answer no long answer yes but very insignificant and not for that reason <laughs> question why is prince charles the heir and not prince philip it may have escaped you to notice but prince philip is dead huh. that would that would that would do it wouldn't it i would let my kid buy minecraft but all i hear is this talk about creepers you think it 
I don't feel safe letting my child buy it. Can any other parent agree with me? Okay, I'm like, uh, 50% sure this is satire, but since I'm not entirely certain, hello there, Mominator. Creepers are things in the game, not actual- Okay, to be fair, there are creepers in online games too, so I, I guess there's sort of a point, but not for that reason. <laughs> Since he was 13 years old, my son had to pay daily parenting fees to live with us. I'm sorry, what? Your 13-year-old paid rent, basically, to live with you. I don't think that's legal. Now he is 18 years old and moved out and refuses to pay them. But he's no longer even living with you. What parenting is he supposedly paying for? Even if this was, you know, legitimate, which it's not, to begin with. You guys are awful parents, what the hell? You're charging him for being born or having been taken care of you? I am glad he moved away from you. He needs to be away from you. I'm gonna be honest, fam, at least when I was a child, my parents paid me. Like, a little allowance and stuff that I usually just used to buy Pokemon cards anyway. Which I wish I had actually saved in proper plastic pockets, because goddamn I could have bought a house with that shit today. But, uh, live and learn, I guess. So yeah, paying your parents for... <laughs> for staying with them as a 13-year-old is really wild and probably illegal. <laughs> Don't do this. Do British people speak with actions when they are at home? <laughs> no, no, it's just something they put on when they're out in public. When they're, <laughs> when they're back home, they speak with a normal southern Texas accent. Don't worry about it. Parents, did you teach your daughter how to handle her brother's naughty urges and what she needs to do to help him? This just reminds me of that Simpson episode when they go like, I don't know, but I ain't paying for two weddings. <laughs> this can't be real. I'm gonna put this up under, I, I hope this is not real. Thank you. I am a 67-year-old cashier. My coworker is 19 and tries talking to me like an equal. Oh, how do I put him in his place and remind him that as an elder, I deserve unconditional respect and obedience? I am 69. I was a manager for years. My employees were, I think, fairly happy with my management style. I earned their respect. Why? Because I respected them, their skills and abilities. They knew their jobs better than I did. As a manager, I was there to help them be efficient and organized, giving them help and suggestions, and in general, let them run with it. Your age is not a condition that makes you eligible for respect and obedience. The fact that you want to put him in his place just means you have a big ego and feel entitled. Respect is earned. Apparently, you haven't done that yet. I also often feel like respect is conflated with like basic decency, you know? It, it's, it easily gets confusing, although in this instance it doesn't sound like they're talking about basic decency. This just sounds like someone who wants to be treated like a god, but not actually doing the work of a god. My aggressively Buddhist neighbor set out the Buddha statue in his front yard, and my kids see it every day. If I put a cross necklace around the statue's neck without damaging it, can I be held liable? <laughs> Aggressively Buddhist isn't a phrase you hear every day. I was envisioning a neighbor who is out chanting on his sidewalk, shaking his beads at every passerby. But no, your aggressive neighbor has a Buddha stature in his own front yard. Oh my god, the horror of it. Do you even know for sure that your neighbor is a Buddhist? My daughter has a Buddha statue beside her fireplace, and she's not a Buddhist. <laughs> my aggressive... <laughs> Just go around and hang necklaces on any symbol you don't agree with. Oh my god, lady. So, uh, to answer the question, I suppose, I don't think anyone would sue you or call the cops for just giving their statue a free necklace, but it also involves kind of trespassing, I suppose. Uh, which is bad. <laughs> I would recommend against it. I had sushi for lunch and I dipped it in soy sauce. Will I become a soy boy now? <laughs> this is like some 2017 YouTube. I am fearing for my life right now. <laughs> I do not want to lose my masculinity. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna lose your masculinity for eating sushi for lunch one day, don't worry about it. As a side tangent on it, diets are important, you know, depending on what you want to do. For example, changing your diet if you want to build muscle mass, or get in shape, or lose weight, or whatever the purpose might be. Uh, planning your diet can be pretty important, but one single meal is not magically going to reduce your masculinity, or whatever. This <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> Does Black History Month also include black cats as well? Because white Europeans did them dirty too. I don't even know what you're talking about. What? Is it due to the saying with black cats and bad luck or something like that? Which is kind of a weird saying to begin with, but is that... is that it? 
As a Christian, whenever I see a gay couple kissing or holding hands in public, is it my job to go up to them and tell them, repent and turn to Jesus Christ? Okay. This one also reads like a straight up satire, but I have also seen people that unironically are like this. I remember having that clip in, what was it? Was it a main character video maybe? Where a couple of girls are just sitting in a McDonald's and because they have short hair, this Karen assumes they're lesbian and tries to hype herself up if she's like saving these random girls that are just eating their happy meals or whatever. <laughs> um... No, don't go up to people like this. You're, uh, you're wild. Thank you. My husband got our 17-year-old daughter Prego behind my back. What do I do? I am freaking out. Uh, is she freaking out because this happened or because it happened behind her back? Yes. <laughs> is this actually real? Sometimes I don't know if these posts are satire or if it's made by people who just don't have any filter, who will just spew any personal problems and wild stories to strangers on the internet. I mean, if it's satire, that's a bit of a... Well, I'm not gonna say it's a shame, because I think I prefer if this story didn't happen. <laughs> but, I mean, people oversharing stuff is certainly good for content. I will give you that. I caught my 12-year-old son kissing a boy in his room! What do I do? I would advise him that under no circumstances would I permit F slurry under my roof. One upvote. Great. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Well, certainly not this. <laughs> If you're concerned with them doing something or not knowing what they're doing and that kind of thing, uh, sit them down, talk about how relationships work, talk about how intimacy works and that kind of stuff, because they're probably getting to a point where they're maybe exploring things or maybe they have a little crush or something like that. Talk to them, I would say. That's that's usually a good thing, yeah. Is it true that if you catch coronavirus and then reproduce slash conceive, then the baby that will be born will look Asian? <laughs> Wait, what, what are these tags? Reproduction, Asian people, childbirth, infectious disease, babies, genetics and heredity, pregnancy. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not a geneticist, but I'm gonna go on a limb here and say no. <laughs> Thank you. My son's behavior is getting out of control and it has me at my wit's end. What should I do? My son is 16 years old. He likes to play video games, listen to weird rock music, and one day I even caught him looking at a Playboy magazine. It is tough because we are a conservative Christian family. Yeah, this is the kind of instance where I don't know if this is bait or not. Let's keep reading, shall we, and see if we can figure it out. I have tried to educate my son into our ways. We have limited his video game playing to an hour a day. Honestly, might be good. Video games can be addicting, especially in your younger years. So limiting video game hours isn't really a bad thing, honestly. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. He's not allowed to play any games above an E rating, and a failure to comply with these rules will result in the Xbox being taken away for a month. <laughs> okay, that seems a bit excessive. As well as his privileges of seeing his friends. <laughs> Wait a second, so, so if he plays a game... That is a bit too naughty, for your opinion. You take his Xbox away for a month and you isolate him from his friends. So he can't play with his friends and he can't meet his friends. <laughs> so he just gets tossed into the basement, basically. <laughs> Alright, well that took a turn. Violent movies are also a no-no in our house. And our movies are family-friendly movies that we can all watch together. TV shows work the same way and we use the V-chip in our house to prevent our kids watching shows with vulgar content. We also do not allow our kids to have smartphones, but we let them have basic jitterbug flip phones. So they can call and text us and we do not allow them to call or message anyone outside the family. <laughs> okay, this just sounds like a cult. <laughs> Once a week, we require our children to give us the cell phone so we can check them and make sure they aren't doing anything inappropriate. Going through the, the flip phones, that is. My son is to be home at 7.30 every day, and he is not allowed to move out and date until he's 25. Every night, we order our kids into a room and we all kneel down on the bed in a row and pray. I am a firm believer of God and I thank him for helping my family maintain a good life and may he deserve the utmost respect. What else can I do for my son to teach him in the ways of light and put him on the right path? Uh... N n uh... <laughs> okay, so and, uh, do, uh, do, don't lock your kids in the basement with cults? I think it's a starter. Yeah, I think that's my answer. That's a pretty good one. Like, at first it starts off with just like, oh, you shouldn't leave kids in front of screens all day long. Alright, fair enough, you know, it starts off reasonably well, and it's just like, I locked them in the basement for a month. If- if they do something I don't agree with, and take away their friends. It is okay to be white. <laughs> okay? 
<laughs> How Europeans disappeared. One wife, two children. Four wives, twelve children outbred. That's a pretty wild term. Uh, outnumbered, outvoted, out. <laughs> Okay, this is this whole thing is is not even a dog whistle because dog whistles are supposed to be kind of sneaky. You know that's why it's called the dog whistle. This what is this? Just a whistle. <laughs> this is just a whistle. Cora, is it possible to lose weight safely by ingesting a parasite? <laughs> I mean, I guess you will technically lose weight, right? <laughs> safely. <laughs> Man, the dietary industry has really gone off the rails, hasn't it? Buy this parasite pill <laughs> now, it will completely demolish your insides and make you poop out your organs. <laughs> Woo! I ate 50 pounds of straight up mold today. Is that okay for me? Ah, uh, average blue cheese enjoyer. What do you mean 50 pounds of mold? Do you mean just that you went into an old house and just took like fistfuls of mold and just shoved it down? And like 20... 50 pounds. That's like 20 kilos. It's like it's like a small child completely made out of mold that, that you just like chug down. How did you even get that volume of stuff down your throat? Is it weird that I enjoy drawing pictures of famous atheists burning in hell? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really weird. I have always wondered who these famous atheists are. I guess modern day would be outspoken ones, like Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, and Bill Maher. Oh yeah, maybe. Maybe is that the one? I, I just picture, like, some, you know, Facebook mom stay-at-home anti-vax kind of stuff. Just sitting and, like, <laughs> doing crayon drawings. <laughs> Of people they don't like on TV just burning. Oh my god. My 16 year old son has a full beard and won't shave. What should I do? How do I get him to shave it off? Should I just do it by myself while he's asleep? I ah, yes indeed, putting a literal razor sharp object up against his throat while he's sleeping and may move around and stuff. Perfectly safe. Yes indeed, I'm also very impressed that it's a 16 year old that has like a full on beard. That's wild, I don't think I grew like anything beard like until I was like in my early 20s or something like that. Although that can vary a lot from person to person, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> why are you so obsessed with your son's beard? If he's rocking a beard at 16, he's owning that high school. Let the boy be. I found my son's stuffed animals that he had as a young child with holes in them. He is 13 and was doing things to them because I found hard spots on them with the stuffing out. What should I do? Uh, thank you so much for sharing, Helen. Um... <laughs> oh, God! So, essentially, you just decided to go online and share, like, a splooshy sock story about your kid, but arguably worse. <laughs> <laughs> then just be like, what do I do? <laughs> Don't do... do no! <laughs> okay, Kit, you shouldn't be climbing in window just because I opened window. Do you want to come here and read memes with me? Do you want to come here? Do you want to come here and read memes? No? You just want pets. Outside of camera angle. So I'm basically giving you free pets, so I'm not even getting content for this. So entitled... Now you're just walking away. <sighs> God, I can't even work in peace. Do atheists understand... <laughs> What is with, like, all the atheist questions? Do atheists understand that they're actually atheists? And this makes them not believers in Almighty God. Ah, oh, that's an interesting theory. Like, all the people identifying with some kind of belief system have just misunderstood what the word means. <laughs> interesting take. Not sure if I believe it's accurate. How do you cook a cat and eat it like Chinese people? Are you... Are, uh, that's, that's a pretty wild formulation to begin with. But it begs a second follow-up question. Are you just looking for cat recipes? Is that, <laughs> is that what this is? This is a pretty wild thing to post. I also just realized that the punctuation, or lack of it, means that this can also mean how do you cook a cat and eat it like you would cook Chinese people? <laughs> like, how do you eat a cat like you normally do cannibalism? <laughs> that's the beauty of lack of punctuation. It can mean multiple things. I just found out that I'm prego with a boy, but I want a girl. Is there a way I can change the gender of the baby to a girl before it develops too quickly into a boy? I am sure this is a troll question. How could anyone be so ignorant of biological processes if it's real? Let's just say it's real though. Sex is determined at conception and can't be changed. I mean, honestly, even if it is a troll question, it's probably good to just answer it so other people don't read it and believe this is the case and start like going down a rabbit hole. 
honestly. Today I took my 13 year old son to a restaurant, but since he tried to order himself, I didn't get him anything and ate everything myself, since he needs to learn to respect his parents. Was this a good move? <laughs> Usually I think you would encourage kids to be independent, you know? Why can't Niger change its name so that white people don't have problems spelling this country's name without sounding the n-word? <laughs> This has to be satire, right? But I have seen this around so many times. I've seen people like on Twitter get legitimately upset about, for example, places in the world or name for countries that sort of sound like that, but has nothing to do with it. And then like they try to cancel countries. <laughs> So maybe this post is just satire, but a lot of satire is like based in some kind of previous reality, you know? The nerdy kid I used to bully sent me an email saying how much I destroyed his life. Should I feel bad? I mean, if you have to ask Cora if you should feel bad, maybe it's time to go to therapy, you know? I have just learned that there is a country in Europe named after Georgia in the USA. Mm-hmm. Are there other European countries that have been named after other U.S. states? <laughs> ah, yes, my favorite European travel destination. The country of Ohio. Why did Georgia name its country after a U.S. state? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't have a laugh or cry. Probably both. If a child is a masochist, how do you determine if a child is a masochist and asks for pain? Uh-huh. Would it still be considered child abuse? So you have like a 10-year-old walk up, walk up to you and be like, Hey, I enjoy being punched. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna punish this child because it's just doing it a favor. <laughs> um, I would go out on a limb and say that I probably wouldn't like touch anyone that comes up to me and says they like pain. That just seems like a massive bait, doesn't it? I am engaged to a married man who still stays with his wife and kids. He hasn't filed for divorce yet. He also wants me to quit my job because we work together. What should I do? I seriously have no idea how our species is still surviving lately. <laughs> Yeah, you and me both, friend. You can't be engaged to a married man. He's married. He doesn't want you to quit your job because you work together. He wants to make sure he doesn't get in trouble and keeps his job. You're being played and you're dumb enough to let it happen. Take a couple of weeks off work. Go to a therapist who's also an ethicist and gain some self-respect. Yeah, this is... This is pretty wild. Like, one thing, if this story is real, one thing that blows my mind about this kind of story is that this husband has already proven that he's willing to basically live double lives and completely lie about it to his loved ones. What makes you think he wouldn't lie to you too? You know, he's already been proven to be a pathological liar. Why wouldn't he do it to you? He just follows the pattern. My husband sent my seven-year-old stepson to boarding school because I dislike him. However, he comes back for a month during vacation. How can I limit his vacation time as much as possible? <laughs> Leave your husband immediately and start a new life. You are destroying the father-son relationship because your self is miserable. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, if you do your best to get, like, kids out of the house that were there before you do. I mean, if you go to someone who already has children, that's part of the deal, you know? Your goal when you get together with someone who has a kid isn't to get rid of the kid. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. What type of owl sounds like a crazy person shouting, Spatula! Spatula! <laughs> Spatula! This is like those questions about songs when there's something like hey everyone i'm looking for this dubstep song i don't remember the lyrics but it goes like this ba 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 what if I do naughty things with my girlfriend while watching anime? She judges me for it and gets uncomfortable, but I think it's my business to watch anime. Is it weird to do naughty things while watching Naruto? Uh, yes, that is inappropriate, especially if your girlfriend has expressed that she's uncomfortable with it. If you truly care about your girl, then you'll turn off the anime during <laughs> naughty. Ah, some healthy replies. <laughs> I am 16 and got three girls preco. <laughs> what should I do? Uh, number one, consider a career in professional sports. You're going to need NBA money to support all the kids. <laughs> Two, Google the word contraception. It's not the most riveting information, but... 11,000 upvotes. <laughs> oh my god. Do lesbians eat vegetables? 
Okay? For example, I have a lesbian friend who doesn't like to eat vegetables, and she says she's worried she will come across as weak and inferior in front of men who she feels oppress her on a regular basis. I am wondering, is the genetic gene responsible for lesbianism <laughs> somehow mutated in recent generations to cause... Kitty, what are you doing? You're just running around in, my, in the middle of my recording. We're talking about how lesbians can't eat vegetables. Please, this is important science. I am wondering if the genetic gene responsible for lesbianism somehow mutated in recent generations to cause them to eat a more masculine diet. The gene... Yeah, the... The gay gene. Yeah, that's... that's the one, yeah. My six-year-old son is morbidly obese and eats snacks while watching TV all day. But he loves food so much and doesn't care about being fat. Should I be putting him on a diet? I think you should just change the way he eats and limit his TV time, to be honest. A six-year-old is not old enough to decide about, like, their long-term life consequences. And something like diet is really difficult. Like, if he's taught to live like this, this is what his body will become used to, and it becomes harder and harder the more time goes on to actually, you know, make him adopt a healthy lifestyle. So don't do this. this. This is so cruel to the child. This just seems like someone who doesn't want to say no to their kid, but saying no to children is very healthy sometimes. Kids test limits, and allowing them to go past any kind of limits, especially regarding health, is not a good idea. A six-year-old doesn't have that kind of mindset to think about things long term. Is it true that German people laugh? <laughs> uh, no, they don't. No. Well, laddies, lasses, and lasses, I do hope you enjoyed this beautiful episode of Dr. Click answering wild questions online. Some of them were really out there, weren't they? Wow, I'm glad we learned so much together here today. Now I can mark this video as educational. A goodie. I do hope you have an amazing rest of your day and that I see you again in the very near future. Take care. Mwah.